that we are injecting into our um, either dependency injection or set of injection but absolutely we may not going to be inject all the time only data there is a chance you may going to inject objects also right there is a scope in the application we may require the objects also suppose example all the DAO class in the all the DAO class may require the database connection database connection is not a primitive value right it's not integer it's not a double it's not a float or boolean it's an object so how we will prepare an object then I will how we will be injecting into either constructor or setter so what is the approach for to inject the different object into our class so how do we inject those objects so the most probably in the real world you will be spending more on the injection of the objects okay but you will also going to be use the normal uh, primitive values but so which is very less less time than compare with the um, the ob objects okay and so we will see now in both the side so we will perform both constructor injection using objects we will also try to perform setter injection using objects okay uh, so in, uh, yes. we have seen a different scopes right request session Yes. Okay. Uh, so, are you going to give example for that? Which scope? Uh, session and uh, request and others are there, right? Total five. Yes. Yes. But so, what will happen is for those we need to develop or we need to build a web application. So, if you are working on web application, so then we will see that time how we can use the session scope, how we can use the uh, the request book the only thing is you need to develop the web application so then that time so your web application context will be initialized so that we will be seeing in part of mvc okay. okay so later we will see that right absolutely yes. okay so the most of the the most of the situations so we will be injecting the objects suppose example if you are working on mvc workflow okay model view controller the architecture architecture so the controllers request all the service class objects all the service class objects okay you are going to be injecting all the service objects into your controller class so similarly if you go to the service and the service is requires all the DAO class objects will be injected into the DAO. Okay. And if you go to the DAO, all the DAOs are required the connection classes. So there is a lot of requirement on the uh, uh, dependency side. Right. So a lot of, I don't know if you have uh, been using that approach or not. But if you see in the real world, so this dependency injection concept is used a wide across for to building the applications. Okay, so with this, so you can avoid the object initialization part completely. Okay, so let me uh, uh, construct a new application. And then so we'll perform the Constructor injections are using objects, right? So I'll close this. Okay. If you want, we can add a new project or we can also reuse it. So most most of you know already how we can create a new project but if you still want I can add a new project otherwise we can also copy and paste the existing project so we can save some time okay 
So what I'll do, I'll try to reuse this project. I'll try to copy and then paste it. So this is our sixth project. And uh, Spring Core Module Dependency Injection using Constructor Objects Dependency Injection, which we are performing, right? Constructor with Objects. So project will be ready quickly. Yes. Okay. I will change in the palm.xml file because it's we are just copy pasted. So make sure that in the palm you need to change the dependencies to your your own project name. Okay. That's it. And all the dependencies are built in automatically. Okay, so now what I'm trying to say, so far in the employee bean is the class, right? So employee bean is the bean class. So what exactly we are doing? So whatever the attributes are that if you see, these are all kind of a primitive values, right? So which we are injecting. So if you look at in a spring configuration file also, it's a kind of very uh, primitive values so that we are injecting but I don't want to be injected like kind of a normal values so which we want to inject an in object okay so how do we inject an object suppose example a employee can uh, belongs to a particular address right a address the address is not a small uh, okay it's a it's not a simple attributes right a address can have address number so that is integer address can have address line one say string right address can have address line two and address can have a city state okay and uh, address can have a zip code like this various attributes are there so you cannot club those attributes into here so the better way to write a separate object better way to write a separate object so then in that object uh, so you can inject that object into the employee bin class let's watch okay how we can perform that so for in order to do that I will construct a new bean class name of the bean class is I'll call it as address bean or maybe address whatever you want so the address we can write the address is the name of the class then finish it so now address class is ready. So what we need to declare here, so we can declare so few fields. Like let's say int, okay, I'll write house number or street number, okay. Private string address line one. Okay, private string. So you can also write city. Okay, address city. Private string and state. Private. Okay. So int maybe zip code like this you can write a various attributes okay country it, you can write uh, many other fields can be added into the address okay but for now assumption okay which we are using maybe a five attributes okay so for for this we need to perform setter injection right sorry so we need to have setters and getters methods or maybe all the setter methods so whatever you want so you we can use it otherwise let me use constructor in this so I'm performing constructor injection so let's I can use constructor for this go to source constructor using fields okay I am selecting all these fields okay and generate it okay 
is it right and then suppose if i want to know all these fields are injected or not so what is the way to display all this content you need to override two string method so let me go to the source again there is an op option called generate two string method so just select that it will automatically generate it. okay so with this all fields we want so it's generated so now your class is ready so what is the next step next step so we need to okay inject this class object into employee bin so how so far we are only writing a data types now what i am writing i am writing my custom object name okay my custom object name i want to inject along with the other data types private address and then address is our custom object and for this address object i want to inject okay so simply what you can do if you really want you can regenerate your constructors and then two string methods simply i'll do that source okay generate constructor using fields generated okay go to source and generate two string method generated done all okay i'll just write here constructor injection is perfect along with address objects okay now so how i am going to be injecting the address here definitely it should be a part of spring configuration file because i have not configured so simply i got an error message saying that so unable to identify a constructor without address right there is no constructor is matching with address so how do you inject the address now here address itself is separate object how do we inject that okay for to address that so what we need to do so we need to configure a new address bin object okay i will configure a new bin so name of the bean give some id okay so id is like address obj and then okay so the class fully qualified class path so the fully the fully qualified class path is com dot easy learn dot address okay and then for this again you need to perform the constructor injection because and again this is also required so a couple of other fields so multiple constructor injections so here we are performing constructor injection here we are performing here normal constructor injection but here so uh, the regular data type values along with your object injection okay so let me inject it first of all here constructor if an arc okay so what is the first value you can specify the indexes if you really want so index of zero okay and then so what is that so value what you want to inject right so likewise i need this is for five times five times okay street number okay so 150 address line one okay any any address line one okay so main street something like that many street okay the city i'll write minneapolis okay so state minnesota Okay, so then what else? So zip code five nine five zero nine one two five some something like that. Okay, some some dummy values. Okay, don't uh, think that so that is the exact data. Some dummy data. So which we are injecting. 
So this one will be index of 0, index of 1, index of 2, index of 3, and index of 4. So that is up to you. If you really want, you can write inject, otherwise it's optional. Okay. Now all the indexes are different, and now your address object is ready. So how do we inject this address object into constructors? Okay. So Mr. Pramod, you need to recollect the knowledge of yesterday. So I showed you what is the purpose of the index and what is the data type uh, the yesterday session. The same I, I'm, I'm applying here. Nothing is new. Okay. So for in order to perform index, okay, index. So, uh, so in order to perform the constructor as an object, so which we want to inject, uh, simply the same way constructor org only. So under this constructor org, so there is an element called ref tag. Okay. So if you see the the meaning of ref tag, so defines a reference of another bean in this factory or external factory can be injected to this class can be injected to this particular class then for to do that you need to use a reference tag then reference you need to mention so what is the parent bean name okay so what is the name of the bean so that we are going to be injecting so that is the name of the bean is the address object right so the address object, so what we are going to be injecting, that's all. Okay. And this is the lengthy way to of define, lengthy way of to define for for in order to do this shortcut. So in the constructor org itself has a direct attribute called ref. So the ref is the okay, the equivalent element of whatever I have written. Okay, ref being so separately I am writing elements. If I am not interested to write that separate element, the shortcut way to defining is directly in the ref tag. Same like value tag. In value tag also you can write like this. But if I don't want to write in a okay the lengthy of the code, you can simply write a directly value tag. So that is up to you. So make sense? So now we are ready. Okay. So the address is ready. The address object is also ready. At the same time. So the bean is also ready. Client class, I don't need to make any changes in this client class. Okay, because the my injection is the same, right? So the only thing is which so the objects, the bean class, what I am retrieving is the same. The only thing is this time I am injecting the objects. Now let me run this code. Run as Java application. So I'm also expecting the object should be injected along with your employee being there. So the moment if I am running, so it is performing the dependency injection. Yes. Now if you look at, so it's perfectly been applied and injected. So if you see constructor injection is performed along with the objects. So, and if it is a normal fields, the, the, the normal data have been injected and when it comes to the address field, the whole address object is injected. Right? Constructor using objects. You are able to inject the objects. Make sense? Any question? Arshini, can you come again once? Which one? Which means? Yeah, this one. Uh, you, want, you want to see the outputs? No, not output. Uh, this address thing. How? Okay. Here is my class. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No. All right, so now I have a uh, question here. So like I have another question, okay? Suppose if my client has a requirement, my employee is not having a, okay, normal address, okay? He is having the multiple addresses. 
one is residence address and second one he, he has mailing address so in, uh, we have to generate i mean address this, this address two times i mean how we can do that how can we perform okay the employee can have multiple addresses now he has residence address as well as mail address and how so, we in this requirement we will construct the application okay any barrier theme address yeah you want me write another class another address yeah? hello yeah either either another uh, here also we can add right one no, 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 no. one another, another yeah correct one by one, one by one so ankur so what is your thought so now i need to write one address uh, class that is residence address dot java and i need to write another uh, uh, java class is mailing address dot java is that what you same thought address. yeah one thing is that another one is same address class you can add uh, some more attributes yes. Yeah, of, of course, of course, yes, of course. So one is address and the second one is mailing address I can use and then, yep, absolutely you are correct. Yes, that is possible. Using that we can perform. Okay, the second level thoughts. Next thoughts. Others, please. So you have to actively participate, so part, uh, contribute your thoughts. Okay, whatever it is, don't worry whether it's a right or not, whatever you are thinking, okay, and you have to put into here. So what is the next approach? Is this the only approach that we are thought, thought? Yes or no, please. Prashanti, Pramod, Amit. I'm not able to hear you all. So are you guys able to hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, you're able to hear me. Yeah, so what is your thoughts? Like how do we, how do we perform? So we can perform setter injection, but so how do I get both the objects? Okay, I need one is for residence address object and second one is mailing address objects, right? Because my client is not having single address, okay? He, has, he is having multiple address. How do we do that? So following me everybody? Amit, you are following me? Or yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in address address uh, dot java you can create two constructors okay here yeah. yeah you can create two constructor dif uh, different different constructor okay. one then? yeah one different param different uh, uh, order or something okay and then then also means like you can achieve that by doing this create one more uh, mailing address means just add one more parameter uh, one more attribute here and uh, make it as a mailing address and while doing the configuration you can mention that in the spring config.xml very good part. Very good part. I yeah, appreciate. That's how exactly it works. Okay, don't think that. Okay, whenever so we need a requirement like this. So don't think that. So don't go to a new address. Okay. So the exist at address object should be able to contribute for both. But the question here is how can I use the same object for different purposes? Okay. The same different object, same object for different uh, purposes. Absolutely, you can use the same object can be used for various approaches. Suppose, example, look at here. Private address, okay, 
by address object. So this is not a regular address. Now this is become a residence address. Okay, I'll change this is to residence address. So similarly, what I'll do, I'll go to private address, and then so become a mailing address. So now the both are at the objects are ready. So now what I will do, I will perform so generating a constructor using a field. Okay. Now object is ready. So now what I'll do, I'll also perform the let me go to source and I'll generate the source in the time. So now both the objects are being ready, both the objects are ready for injection. But when I go to the spring configuration file, it is expecting me to have another object to be injected. But so how should I get the another address object? So whenever if you want you okay, the same thing should be acted for different purposes and different situations. No problem, just you can configure as another being. Okay. So you can configure as another being. So you can write uh, the first being name as so this is your residence address object, and this is become your mailing address object. Now both objects are ready. So this is seven six eight some different address. Okay. Post box. Okay something like this and you can give different states okay now app New York something like this and some um, so in code number some dummy number okay now so what I can do I can perform okay constructor injection so and now the first uh, the address object is my residence address I need to inject it okay next one so which I am going to be inject so constructor arg okay so for this time I am not using a ref tag I will be using ref attributes and I want to inject mailing address that's it so very simple and your requirement is satisfied now and for this employee object so you are able to inject one is residence address and then second one is mailing address right this is how you can use okay you can inject the various objects not only one object okay you can inject different objects not only the same object you can also inject different objects into your your being class so now let me run this go to run as java application you see Okay, let me uh, write for to this to display into next line slash in so that you can see instead of a big line, okay, we can split into the next line. So now if I go to run as client class, so client is rendered. Now you add a response, the address, right? So your residence address is this, okay? Now your mailing address is also in injected. So both of them as the different objects, but the same address is used for different purposes. Mr. If you want to do the same thing with uh, uh, second injection, then how will do this? Yeah, that is what I am going to be showing you the next approach. The next approach is construct, uh, so far we have seen the constructor injection okay with objects but my requirement is to know how can I perform the same different same requirement in terms of the setter injection okay and that's what my next application so for any question so before we move on into the next one, next application any doubts okay, if you have these are all the basics Fundamentals, if you are missing the fundamentals, so definitely it is a challenge for you to understand the upcoming sessions. Okay, the upcoming concepts are completely depends on this. 
okay that time I may not going to be concentrating that time I may not speak like this so with this slow okay so I'll be concentrating on other topic with the assumption that you are understand how this injection is being performed right so if you have any questions any doubt so please feel free to ask at this point otherwise go back and then practice yourself and then come back with your questions all right so now moving on into the next example how do we perform so spring dependency injection okay with setter injection approach i want to reuse the same project okay i'll try to reuse so we can save some time to creating a project copying of all the beans okay so we can say so that is my seventh project okay spring core with the setter injection setter injection with the objects setter along with the objects okay Almost project is ready. Let me change in pom.xml file project name. Okay, now new project is ready for us. And simply what I'll do now. So now we have to perform setter injection, but not constructor injection, right? So then this employee bean should become a not a constructor class it should if you want to keep it constructor no problem otherwise if you want you can remove that constructor so now so we need to perform setter injection so if you want to perform a setter injection so constructor is not required what you require you require a setter methods for all this attributes okay simply I need to select all the setter methods if you want you can generate setters as well as getters or if you want only setters you can select only setters as well now I'm selecting all the setters and click on OK so perfectly all your setter methods are generated okay so now question here is how do we perform the setter injection so how do we perform maybe for address we can use the same thing okay for address we are performing the constructor injection but while injecting that address you are performing as a setter injection so the both the ways or if you want you can also change this to perform setter injection you already know how how you can perform okay if it is a normal data type values how you can perform setter injection we have already seen in a different examples right so I'll keep this as the same for constructor injection, but only apply I mean I will change it to perform setter injection. So now let's go to the uh, spring configuration file. So what will be changes? Can anyone uh, have any idea? So what we need to change here for to satisfy setter injection with objects? Oh, we have to remove the constructor arc. Exactly. What do you need to do? Okay, you need to change instead of constructor org. So this is the main property. So property, yeah. right? So you have to use a property. So wherever constructor org is there, you need to just replace with property. Okay. Sir. Okay. I'll just do the replace all I cannot use because in Abo you have simply if it is a constructor injection you have to use the attribute called constructor icon or so if it is a right if it is a property then you can use then you are going to be okay injecting as a value right so how you can inject the value based on the name of the so for which we are going to be right then so what will be the value so if I go to here name attribute so I can do that first of all which property and what value you are going to be interested. so the name will be and this one is is a contractor here all other attributes are coming 
and whether it is automatically showing you the each contractor is attributed to are using it represents that we are calling this they are using employee name is so we are calling this directly this okay with the transparent approach is able to do this right so and is a contact is go to me so someone is a device please go to one of you mute yep okay so now next attribute is so and this one is department name right so name equal to which one you need to select so department name so that is your department and i know i don't need the index and i don't need the type so these two attributes are only required when you are performing constructor injection so for setter injection is not required because you are directly mentioning the attribute name itself okay and next field is name is so that is your employee name so you need to specify the employee name next attribute so which is the salary of the employee so you need to use salary object okay next attribute is employee id so we are going to select employee id and you don't need to specify index I'll delete this, and this is become ref tag. But so for which property you are applying for ref tag? So you need to select the name or not? So we need to select the name attribute. So what is the so the address? So this is become your residence address. Okay, and so again, so here also for which name attribute? So you are using for mailing address, right? We are clearly mapping for each attribute for what value you are injecting very clearly which we are mapping right that is the reason in the real world application development we will most of the situations we will encourage you to perform the setter injection rather than constructor injection okay so the most of the time we will encourage to perform setter injection but not constructor injection so constructor injection is until unless you want to construct a object so these are all a mandatory that you need to set it only for mandatory of the values then you can go to this but whereas the setter injection is optional is it compulsory that so do i need to inject all these values absolutely not maybe some clients may have mailing address some employees may have mailing address some employee may not have the mailing address right so simply i have a facility to set it as optional but whereas the constructor argument i definitely need to supply some value you cannot inject a null value or return right so that's why usually we will prefer to go with the so setter injection so now our approach is ready okay so now we can go ahead then run the application let me run this application okay i will put here slash in actually i don't want to see this ashwin uh, yeah. how internal object is created in setter injection and constructor injection yeah that will be taken care by spring framework it uses the design pattern called singleton design pattern and using that it will create the object and simply however we write a new of object in the same way it does the same thing but that is not in our control so if you see here nowhere i have not used any way to creating a manual object everything i am handovering to spring framework the handovering mm -hmm. but conferring as a beans so, so container will take care of all this thing object creation and what is that container spring i mean container is the responsible so that is the one of the main feature of spring framework right so it it perfectly manages the objects okay now let me run this application run as java application see so dependency injection is performed with using setter along with the objects so for exactly in residence address place the residence address is injected and for mailing address mailing is injected Right. The only thing is, what you have changed. 
So wherever the constructor is there, you have to change the constructor arg become a property and then for which property this value being you are injecting and you need to specify that. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Siri, we can uh, do this by uh, in address class. We have not changed uh, constructor to setter address. Do we can do that? Uh, address dot Java. I ask you a question. So, in address dot Java, what are you saying? We have not modified it to setter address. Yes. These all things. Yeah. Yes. These all properties. You can you can practice at your home that okay so then you can try to remove this constructor then so make a changes to perform setters method and then try to inject those values in a setter approach and then you can try that is a new project at your home okay so any other questions from anybody all right okay so now Bring me one more thing. Yeah. What is the primary difference between set, uh, this uh, setter, setter injection and uh, uh, constructor injection? Means like if we want to proceed with an application, and we have to uh, decide like uh, means like which approach we have to went through. Means either the setter injection or uh, constructor injection. I have explained right just before. Yeah, the just yeah, before. Yeah. I have explained you saying that okay whenever if you need the injection should be performed along with the object creation then you have to go for constructor injection and uh, as part of the constructor injection your object will be constructed at the same time your values will be injected so you don't need to wait until the calling of setter method and then so injecting right so you can inject all your values at the time of object itself getting ready then you are constructor arguments object all those constructor arguments also ready okay the second difference what i mentioned is so if it is a constructor arguments it's compulsory that okay you need to pass the values okay so you need to specify the values in terms of constructor injection so but whereas the in case of setter injection which is optional which is optional suppose if you see here if i remove one of the constructor argument if i remove i will definitely get an error saying that there is no constructor is matched with this ambiguity and uh, with that meaning that i cannot pass a null value okay so simply so it is it is making that mandatory that you need to pass all these values whenever a mandatory scenarios so then you can use this constructor but the same thing if I'm trying to apply like let's say this employee is not getting any salary for this month, salary was cut. So then simply no problem, but still your dependency injection can be performed with salary as zero. See? Salary was injected as zero and uh, nothing, no problem, and he'll, he'll get it. And also, uh, so as I said, the setter injection is more transparent than your constructor injection. So you need to again like zero index means what is the the zero of the argument name you need to try to compare one by one but so in case of this you have a transparent that okay this false value you are injecting to the setter method call is contracted like this so it has a more clear and transparent if you are using the setter injection make sense yeah no i got it because in uh, real time project we decide most of the value on the later stages not the initial stages exactly okay so, so now moving on into the next concepts okay so so far whatever we perform the objects right so basically this beans will be constructed you all know that the moment if i define a bean so if I'm using application context, this bean objects will be readily constructed, right? So this beans will be readily constructed and even before using add in employee bean, okay? And I don't want this beans to be constructed and before my employee bean, okay? I want to construct along with this, okay? Simply in Java, we will write a class 
and we can also write inner class exactly the same thing is also applicable here so you can write a bean class inside the bean you can write another bean is called inner beans okay so the inner bean when will be inner will be an object will be constructed whenever the main bean is constructed then automatically inner bean object will be constructed right so the exactly the same fundamental will be applied here so you can also perform the inner beans so you can also write inner beans so that inner beans can be applied for both constructor injection as well as setter injection and i'll try to show you for setter injection how you can use the concept of inner beans so I will reuse this again the same project so I'll copy and then paste it so this is our eighth project so and uh, I'll write so inner beams how do you write inner beams okay and that is my name of that is our name of project so build is set up and your project is ready let me change the name of the project artifact id will change name of the project will changed close this all okay <clears throat> so for to okay for to apply the inner beans so just in the spring configuration file if you make the changes is fair enough how do you make the changes so for this beans are being constructed independently i don't want this bean to be constructed independently okay simply you can cut down this bean okay so along with the reference bean okay so this bean injecting okay so we are constructing independently that bean then we are injecting so i want to construct this bean under okay when this property is been injected that time i want to construct okay as this bean is nobody else is going to be using because so this is under only this property you don't need id also okay you don't need id also right because it will construct immediately then it will inject so if you uniquely you want to identify across the application then you need a bean id otherwise you really not required okay the same the case with mailing address as well simply what I'll do okay I'll try to okay, remove this ref tag and then I will move this as a and the main bean I will move this is a inner bean okay so now if you see if you see now the whole structure of the bean how it is looks like so you have a main bean called employee bean under this main bean you have multiple beans so the okay so what is residence address bean and second one is mailing address bean so bean inside you have another bean is called as inner bean same like in java okay in oops concepts right the class inside you you are writing another class is called inner class you know benefits of inner class Right? the same thing will be applicable even here also the same thing will be applicable all the features will be applicable here as well. so now let me go to spring dependent client and then I will run as Java application so the eight applications here it's happily injected inner beans and then you should able to see both the address objects values as well So any questions on inner beans? So everybody is silent. Uh, is it something like you are not following me? Can I understand like that? Or you are understand everything? Pramod, Prashanti, you both of you are quietly silent. 
Okay, you both are very quiet. And Amit. Yes, yes, sir. Are you following me? Or am I, am I going in the right direction? No, I'm getting the idea, but uh, not completely, actually. So you're not able to follow me, not able to understand? Not completely. Okay, so what's your question? So here you are using inner beings, so like uh, after construct, after con uh, constructing the object, you will directly inject, right? Yes. So that is the reason we use that uh, inner being. Exactly. Yeah. What's your question here? Okay, uh, Pramod, how about you? You're able to follow me? Okay, Prashanti, you are offline. You are able to hear us. Okay. All right. So okay. Uh, so that's all. Okay. I have, yeah. Thank you. One okay. question. Yes. Are yes. Please. In this uh, inner being, the generation of the classes will happen in the same way, like how we are mentioning. Yes. Like exactly. first we have uh, property tag inner bean. We have mentioned residence address and mail address. Yes. And and first address class will be generated and then uh, and then we will be generated. Then dependent on that. Yes. 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 Unknown caller. That's right. Have some time, Prashanti. You came back. So if you have some time, so I can continue. If you all have another, okay, five to ten minutes of your time, if you have, I can also continue to go with other few more concepts. Yes, sir. No problem. So now let's continue. So Pramod, so how about you? So are you good? Okay. So don't be in trouble. So okay, if you have uh, anything that you want to go and if you want to leave, so because I know we have already reached nine minutes. Okay, nine o'clock. So five minutes. Okay, for Ankur. Yes, you can continue. Everybody is saying. Prashanti, you also. Okay. So if you're fine, so I'll I'll go with this. All right. So okay, moving on into the next concept is so inner beans is okay, very less uses. We don't use much okay the concept, but I want you to let you know the concept of inner beans. So that's what I explained to you. Okay. So now going back, uh, the setter injection. Okay, so we have seen about now residence address as well as mailing address, right? So and we are able to inject both. The residence address as well as uh, mailing address okay now my client is came back and then so he was asking for to inject another address called overseas address okay when the client is asking to okay so perform the overseas address so then what I need to do anybody have a thoughts now Client is asking to perform the overseas address. So I think you can go to same address class and uh, uh, add more. Yeah, more with the address. Overseas address, and then we can perform the same. Mm. Way. Okay. Now, is there any different way uh, we can perform this operation? Yeah, that's what my next question is. Again, the next day, my client is came 
and again okay so he was asking okay for two again so the employee i need also his office address as well yeah correct so like every day it's very heavy weight you know so there should okay. be a proper mechanism uh, absolutely so you cannot go with this approach okay and literally if your values are going to be increasing okay your requirement is going to be increasing so you cannot okay control all these different objects so by so every time you cannot change your main beam class okay whenever the client requirement is changed you cannot change so your your bean class your employee bean should able to have the capability to hold all different addresses okay so simply in case of java okay in case of java so we have something called collection framework as part of the collection framework so we use a concept called list in the list what we can do and we can store a different objects in the list exactly the same thing can be also performed so dependency injection can be performed even with the list of objects also so far we have seen about the plain data types of the values injection we have seen then so we have seen about the single object injection then we have seen a multiple okay the object injection but now my objects length is been increased and then i want to inject as a collection of objects i want to inject the collection of objects so all the collections injection is possible you can inject set of values so that is your set interface the objects you can inject so you can also inject the list of objects you can also inject map of the values right it's part of collection we have um, so three classifications list map set all the collections yes it is possible you can inject over here hello that's it so give me five minutes i'll be joining sure sure yeah i'll be joining all right so okay now let's continue with the example okay so i will utilize this application for to perform the list of objects should be injected using setter injection the same thing is also applicable for constructor injection for constructor injection you can try at your home okay but now i'll try to show you how do we perform setter injection with list of objects okay i am using the same project so this is our ninth project so the setter with list of objects not like one or two all right so for to make it work so what we need to really make a changes in the address bin i don't want to okay my client is frequently asking me to add a different values and different so addresses so the simple way to handle this is so to make this is list list of address so this list is your java.util.list Okay, what happened? So java.util.list and I'll remove this mailing address and so this has become an addresses. Okay, all different addresses can be pulled into this or you can also write address list whatever name that you want. Okay, I'll perform the, let me remove this two and you don't need these two and you don't need these two injections separately. Simply what I'll do, I'll perform a setter method, select a setter method for addresses, and then it is injected. And I'll simply display that here. That's it. Okay. So when I go to address, at the end of address, so I want to move to this to the next line. All right. 
so now going back so spring config okay in this config list so how do you prepare a list okay how do you prepare a list so simply and this is become your addresses right and you cannot use directly as a ref tag so you have to add all the values into the list then you have to inject right how how do we do that so similarly okay however you write so this will perform the list of values can be injected the set of values can be injected so map of values will be injected okay all the collection objects can be possible to perform in the setter injection so okay under this list okay you need to use the different inner beans you can inject or ref tags or another collection object you can inject whatever you want the various values can be injected under list so now i am preparing the list and for this list you can add one by one value okay you can add one by one add it. so first object i am adding into the list in the zero is index is ref bean of this and now i want to add another okay the object is mailing address likewise you can pass overseas address or okay if he is asking office address okay or if he is asking so is his personal address you can okay set it all the different things can be injected that is how you can inject the list of values to the your employee bin. so now the list of values you are injecting into your client now if i go to here okay and if i run the spring client class then if i go to run a java application okay so it is injected it is injected the list of addresses the first address and second address okay in the future okay in the future if there is one more address is came it's called mailing address you don't need to make anywhere in the changes only okay this bean if it is coming dynamically no problem so you can use that bean so overseas address okay maybe i'll try to change only one value and this overseas address you need to just add in the ref tag that's it Okay, you don't need to make any other where changes is not So simply, I'll be okay injecting over to the address. That's it. If I can go to run as my client class, so my client should be able to get those values. Right? This is called a dynamic behavior. Okay. So dynamically, Spring framework not only a regular data types. Okay and not only address and even it will allows you to perform the uh, the the collection classes also the collection of objects also can be performed using the dependency injection approach so very very important fundamentals whatever we are discussing everything will be utilized in the upcoming sessions okay so the same thing also can be performed using okay your set of objects you can also perform the set of values suppose okay if i want to perform set of okay set of values so simply this should become a set this should become a set of values which you can inject which you can inject i'll import the package Okay, so java.util.set. Okay, I've changed it to everywhere. So this should become an asset. And so what you need to do, and instead of list, I'll comment this part. Okay, and this should become a set. So hope you know the benefit of the list versus set. Can anyone describe what is the difference between set and list? Okay. So now if I go to run as Java application, okay. So if you see here, okay, it is perfectly performed using the set of values also able to inject, right? Even set is also possible. Same way you can also perform map as well so that you can practice at your home. Okay, so can anyone describe the, the collection framework of the difference between list and sets? Uh -huh. 
list can contain duplicate uh, elements, but uh, there is no duplicate in set. Okay. Shall we try that practically? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's try. Okay, I want to repeatedly add a mailing address. So does it going to be applies the same thing? Thank you, Pramod, for adding. So so set should not allow the duplicate. So then simply blindly I added my mailing address as in a duplicate. So how many addresses? Uh, so how many addresses public so that I can see here the four objects? But as I am using in a okay set, uh, I should ultimately should able to see only three values, right? Exactly, is it applying the collection feature of set or not? So it is simply eliminating the duplicate, right? So now let's try with the same thing. Okay, for the same thing you can try for okay sets. Okay, and uh, so each collection class is also have the compatibility. So let's see. So now I want to okay duplicate. Uh, um, so the mailing address I want to add here. So simply I add a duplicate mailing address, and then this is become a list. So now if I go to run as Java application, still not because. I have not changed it here, right? So if I change here, so this should become a list of addresses being changed. Now if I go to client, so list should allow you to store the duplicate values. Now you are able to see four address objects. Seven six eight is duplicated. Okay, so here you can able to see. So like this, you can play a lot of other things on this collection. Uh, Srini, actually, seven six eight and seven six eight are the same address, right? All the things are same. You just copy and paste it. Right? So if you want to uh, uh, differentiate the internal thing, internal uh, values inside an object, so we need to write compare, right? Or write compare. We can we do this here? I mean, regarding what purpose we are looking at? Uh, still, actually, inside set again, you are able to. Set will automatically identify the objects, right? So, if it is a duplicate objects, if you are specially looking at some properties or can be duplicated, then only you need to override hash code and two string methods for to check the equality of the object. But I'm as as I'm using the same reference address object, so. It will always checks the equality of the basic equality of the objects. It will not check the content equality, but if you want to check the content equality also, then you need to override those two objects, and then you can check the objects comparability, right? Yeah, right. You are getting me right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any any other question from anybody? Okay. All right, sounds good. So please practice. If you're not practicing, then it will be a challenge. Okay, at the time of my explanation, looks it's a very simple concepts. But once if you start applying, then you can see the actual painful. So please try to practice and before attempting into the next session. So all the sessions are interdependent to each other. So when you are look, uh, attending the next session, so it's completely depending on the previous concepts. Okay. So with that said, that's it I have. Have a good day to all of you and see you on the next session and bye-bye. Thanks, man. Thank you.